Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Reed. I'm uh, director of applied projects with uh, with Heart Square. Um, I'm really excited to uh, to be doing this webinar today on a on a on a really burning topic in the uh, in the, in the not-for-profit space, um, and that's uh, the use of mobile apps for membership organisations and, uh, and and other other non-profits. Um, I'm really pleased to say we've got uh, a great panel here today with uh, with RD Mobile and uh, one of the, the main providers to mobile apps in the in the not-for-profit space. So uh, really looking forward to a, to a great panel. Uh, we've got something over 50 delegates uh, in the event today. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 really uh, exciting topic to talk about. Okay, so let me uh, first of all uh, start off with setting out the challenge to the uh, to the not-for-profit space. Uh, Heart Square, we do a lot of research on uh, uh, on, on topics uh, affecting the uh, the not-for-profit space, um, and we've recently carried out some research on uh, the gaps. Uh, in people's technology roadmap. Uh, so um, I'm getting some feedback saying I need to adjust my uh, my audio settings. Just give me one second while I do that. Okay, I hope that's I hope that's clearer. Okay, I hope that's uh, I hope that's clearer. Um, okay, so uh, we've done uh, some uh, some interesting research into the challenges in the in the not-for-profit space, um, and what we are um, what we found um, is that uh, in a survey of over 500 uh, not-for-profits, um, we asked them uh, where they were in terms of their roadmap and, and perceived gaps. Uh, we found that, um, as, as uh, with the first point, um, the use of mobile apps or the need for mobile apps is uh, very highly on the radar uh, for a lot of organizations. So uh, a lot of organizations in the UK said they were considering moving to a mobile app. Interestingly, in the US, um, something uh, over 90% of uh, associations there already use some form of mobile app. So it may be uh, that, uh, that that's changing here and we're, we're going in the same direction. Um, a significant proportion, a little under half, said that their members were already um, setting out expectations that there should be a mobile app, um, and uh, 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 something over 70% said that they felt it would be expected in the uh, in the next couple of years. Um, one of the key things that we found um, that, that's interesting and that's bringing changes about is that really all the way through the 2010s. Um, the big thing for associations and charities was uh, was about uh, the website as a major channel, um, online self-service, um, and, and social listening uh, to a lesser extent. Um, the feedback now is that people are saying, well, actually, um, their members and supporters are not spending a lot of time on their website. So the challenge then becomes, well, what other channels can we use uh, to, to communicate with members? Uh, and the answer to that seems to be to communicate with them where they live, uh, where they're spending their time, and where they're spending their time is with uh, is on their mobile devices. Um, the subsidiary challenge that we got from that piece of feedback, which seems uh, pretty clear, we are all, are all spending a lot more time on our phones than, than visiting uh, member association and charity websites. The challenge then becomes, how do I get them to install uh, the mobile app? But once you've got them to install the mobile app, there's a whole conversation around that. Um, then the level of engagement seems to uh, seems to be vastly better. Uh, one of the the final pieces of feedback, very recent uh, question, uh, was around um, uh, how people felt about in-person events. Um, and there seems to be a significant strength of feeling that uh, even once the current crisis is over, uh, the likelihood of people feeling as comfortable getting in a room with hundreds of other people um, seems to be less. Uh, so there's likely to be a move permanently uh, towards uh, virtual events um, and towards uh, events happening through other channels. So 
really interesting feedback uh, that we're uh, that we're con continuing to develop from our surveys. Okay, so that's the challenge that the uh, the UK NFP sector is is facing. Um, just before I hand over to the RD team, uh, just a couple of bits of uh, of, of webinar etiquette. Uh, we are recording um, the current session. Um, uh, there is a, a Q and A box. Uh, please uh, type any questions relating to your own organisation or, or your views of what's happening in the NFP space uh, into the Q and A box, and we'll address them uh, towards the end of the session. Um, if you are struggling in any way with any technical issues, uh, use the chat box, and we'll uh, we'll do our best to address it during the meeting. Um, uh, and uh, the microphone on, is, is on mute, and that just accounts for the for the panel uh, as well. Okay, so with that, I'll hand over uh, to James Roberts. Uh, from RV Mobile. Thank you very much, James. Thanks very much, Alan. Um, and thank you very much to the rest of the Heart Square team for um, helping to set this up and hosting today. And of course, thank you to um, everyone who's, uh, who's joined us today. It's, a, it's appreciated. Um, so uh, yeah, we're going to do some quick introductions then. Uh, my name is James Roberts. I'm the head of business development um, at RD Mobile. I look after our UK and um, European um, business development requirements. Um, I've been in the technology field for about 20 years in the association space for about five years. That's me on the right there. For those who can spot the difference, it's an easy one. I've lost my beard recently. That's, um, that's actually a d direct result of all of this webinar activity. Um, I'm a huge advocate for webinars and I love virtualization. Obviously, I, I love technology. I work in the, in the industry. Um, you know, when it comes to webinars, I'm a bit of an environmentalist. So, you know, the fact that we're keeping our carbon footprint down by not going to smaller meetings and using webinar tools is really exciting for me. I'm um, also from a time saving and efficiency standpoint, you know, not having to travel eight hours of a day just to, to go for an hour long meeting. Um, so, yeah, I, I love webinar technology. But that said, it's a learning curve for me. And one of the things that I found out recently is I touch my face all the time when I'm, I'm delivering webinars and that's not cool at the moment. So I've got rid of my beard. Um, what else have I learned from it? I don't move around too much. So I'm now sitting on a seat. I'm using, used, used to presenting in person. So I'm sitting on a seat. Um, and the other thing, I, I use the word cool all the time. Um, this is actually a really important one for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I mean when I say cool, just, just briefly. I, I love great technology and, and I love and, 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 and really passionate about technology that um, helps organizations with their business challenges and helps them overcoming um, those business challenges specifically and very much that's the case in you know the not-for-profit and the, the charity sector where ultimately a lot of the stakeholders can be you know um, in less beneficial situations maybe you know kids with disabilities or you know um, you know medical causes and and I really am passionate about the idea that you don't need to spend a million pounds to get a great piece of technology um, and um, and so when I say cool, that's what I mean. Um, in terms of the other participants, uh, Russ, are you there? Still on audio. Hi, Russ. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Hi, uh, Russ. Could we have a quick intro, please? Uh, sure. My name's Russell Magnuson. I'm the CEO of RD Mobile. And uh, I'm coming to you this morning from Alexandria, Virginia, which is just outside of... Uh, Washington DC and uh, um, you know, good morning. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. Thanks very much for us. And do we have Michael Jones as well? Good morning, Michael. Good morning, James. Uh, how, how are you today? You well? I am doing quite well. I'm doing quite well. As uh, the host apparently needs to start my video up again, but when they do, you'll be able to see me. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> perfect, perfect. In the meantime, could we have an intro from you, Michael, please? Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, I am the Vice President of Mobile Technologies with Results Direct. Um, I've been with the organization for about 10 years now, which in, uh, in mobile years, I guess, is all of them. And uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a really interesting uh, 10 years. Uh, that was basically right after the App Store launched. So we've had the opportunity over those years to work with uh, a number of organizations. We started off doing custom and bespoke apps, and then, of course, moved into products. And uh, today, our international customer base, uh, I guess we've helped about six, 700 different organizations as far as mobile apps so far. So it's been, uh, it's been quite an adventure. But yeah, excited to be able to share it today. 
Oh, lovely. Thank you very much, Michael. So in terms of the agenda, uh, we've done the introductions. I'm going to um, spend a couple of minutes talking about the organization itself. Uh, I'm, um, then we, we're doing, as Alan mentioned, we're doing some polls uh, sort of smattered through as well. So we've got a poll at that point. And then we're handing over to Russ, who's uh, just going to set the scene, really, for some of the stuff we're going to be talking about. Um, and then we're going to be talking about, our, I'm going to talk a little bit about our products. And, you know, the main... Um, content for this webinar is really about our, our customers and, and what they've been doing really well to pivot given the current scenario and, and really adapt to what the, f the future looks like. So we're really, myself and Michael are gonna focus on those elements. Then we've got another poll. I think we've got two polls for the price of one after that. And then we're gonna have some Q and A with the panel um, at the end. So um, in terms of the organization, um, RD Mobile um, is part of Results Direct. Um, Results Direct is a, a web agency based, based out of the US and about 10 years ago um, as um, mobile applications started to really gain traction and become really popular, um, we moved into the, um, the mobile app space. So really for about as long as the industry has been around, RD Mobile has been delivering mobile applications. And we delivered this to hundreds of organizations um, around the world. Um, uh, I look after the U UK space um, within the UK um, and Europe. Um, we have a great customer set now um, and, um, and some really big names as well. So, you know, organizations like the Institute of Fundraising, um, the Union Unite, which is one of the biggest membership um, orientated organizations uh, in, uh, in Europe, is, is one of our customers using our um, uh, event engagement applications. Uh, the Open University, and you can see some of the other um, uh, logos that we work with um, on, on the slide there. Um, I just think, you know, beyond that, really, um, the important thing for me about the, the organization for our customers is really, um, you know, firstly, you know, we've been in the UK for about two years. And um, just in terms of the, the organization's commitment to the UK and European marketplace in, in two ways. Firstly, um, from a, a geographical perspective, um, Russ Magnuson, who's speaking in a minute, he is almost always in the UK, or used to be before coronavirus came along. Um, and um, it's, yeah, I, I live in Basel in Switzerland, um, but I, I've only recently moved out here. When I lived in the UK, it felt like Russ was in the UK more than I was, which was weird because I lived there. Um, he's a big fan of Ireland, so he spends a lot of time over there. And, and just as an organization, they're just hugely committed to the marketplace. You know, they're all up at 4 or 4 30 this morning delivering this, and this is not uncommon for them. And also, more importantly than that, is just their commitment to the customer. Um, in my 20 year career, I can honestly say that I don't know of an organization that is committed to their customers and their customers' success. Um, more than RD Mobile um, is. Um, it's kind of a sort of a family orientated organization and, and really passionately cares about, you know, their, their customers and their staff as opposed to, you know, investment stakeholders and whatever. So it's a big deal and it means we've got loads and loads of happy customers. Um, I've only been with the organization, um, you know, really since the, the end of last year, the beginning of this year. So I'm fairly new, but I know the applications from um, uh, the company I worked at previous to RD Mobile, where RD Mobile was a partner. And, um, and we went through a number of different mobile application partners. And what we found with RD Mobile is that we could give them our CRM customers and they, our customers were always happy. Um, so yeah, it's a pleasure to work with our, our um, RD Mobile. Um, at this point, I think we're gonna move over to a quick poll before we hand over to, um, to, to Russ. Thank you, Alan. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, I'd like to um, ask the organization, uh, the delegates now, uh, to tell us a little bit about your, um, uh, your main challenges, uh, and then we can uh, uh, look to address those challenges. So uh, you'll see the question um, in front of you now. Um, it's multiple choice. Uh, so would you mind, uh, please, uh, just highlighting what your organization's main challenges are as you see them in the, in the sector? Uh, the results are anonymous. Great, just getting the last few answers uh, in. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, is finish polling, and then um, I'm going to share the results. Okay, and as you can see, 
Uh, very interestingly, uh, the main challenge that uh, most of you are, are having um, are, are actually about keeping engaged uh, with your members and, and, and supporters, uh, particularly when there's no in-person uh, meetings. In the charity space, of course, uh, community fundraising is extremely difficult now. Uh, the, everything from the London Marathon to uh, smaller uh, local events are, are being cancelled. And of course, people are incredibly distracted now. So it's how do we, uh, how do we communicate with our members and supporters and, and keep them engaged? Uh, so that's a, that's a really interesting piece of uh, feedback there. Um, uh, the, the fact that we're having to postpone uh, events, uh, we've switched everything to webinars. That actually worked extremely well, but you've got to change the event. It can't just be, you know, uh, PowerPoint on a, uh, on a, uh, you know, on a webinar instead of in person, you have to change the content and you have to change the way you deal with people. Um, and then, of course, uh, a huge worry throughout the NFP space, uh, losing membership revenue uh, because all of your members might be, um, you know, not able to practice uh, and using losing supporter revenue from the lack of community fundraising and the lack of ad, ad hoc donations. We're seeing that uh, everywhere. So great, um, really interesting uh, results there. And I'll, I'll uh, invite the RD Mobile team to, to comment on those as, uh, as you go through the rest of the presentation as well. Thank you. Thanks very much, Alan, that's, um, that's appreciated. Um, yeah, great results. Uh, we, we can't even vote for those, those polling questions as they, as they come through as much as I'd like to. So they're not influenced by us at all, but those um, top answers there are absolutely in line with the kind of things that we're gonna be showing you in a little while. So that's great. Uh, Russ, can I hand over to you, please? Sure, thank you. Um, and uh, thanks for that great introduction, James and Alan. Again, good morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to be here. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the upside at this point in time is, uh, you know, we're all uh, probably mostly over the shock of what's happened and, and how it's affected the industry and our individual organizations and companies. And, uh, and so that's a good thing. It means that, uh, you know, we can kind of focus on, on the future. Um, and 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 I, I found that poll interesting, um, and because it really zeroes in on on some of the challenges that I think are are coming out of the the fog, if you will, you know, and that's around uh, how do we communicate, how do we engage, uh, and how do we make up for uh, the revenue that's essentially gone missing from events that we can't uh, uh, can't have, and of course, already mobile you know, experienced the same thing that many of your organizations did where, you know, we had things planned, we had to cancel. Um, and, uh, um, you know, so it, it, it was, you know, as, as, as a group, as an industry, we all, <laughs> we all kind of went through the same thing at the same moment, which uh, in, an, in and of itself is, uh, uh, is kind of remarkable. Uh, but at this point, I think most organizations, including, uh, including us, you know, we've already done the basic things. If we had to cancel things, we've done that. Uh, we've done basic communications. You know, we've checked in on people uh, and we've kind of gotten organized for, uh, for this, this current time. Um, and, and Alan, I was glad, uh, glad to hear you say in the very beginning that, um, you know, that, that things um, really aren't going to go back to how they were. I forget how you phrased it, but um, you you know, I, I think that uh, one of the ways to look at it is, yeah, things won't go back to how they were, uh, but we may in fact come out of this with uh, some really interesting new ways of, of serving members and, and customers. Um, and so up on, the, uh, up on the screen now, I just kind of have how we were looking at it from a phases uh, standpoint. I think the immediate actions are all done. Um, the things that we might be looking at now is how can we quickly uh, replace some of our events um, and uh, uh, you know synchronize our communications and and make sure that um, you know that that we're organized um, and then you know as we go forward and look into the future I think is really where it's interesting um, so you might hear the words um, uh, blended events what's a blended event. Well, maybe there's a component where uh, there's some on-site in-person aspects, 
uh, and and but there might be a number of people participating by um, uh, you know uh, virtually uh, through their uh, computers and and uh, mobile devices and whatnot, uh, and maybe they come and go, uh, and maybe there are situations where um, for whatever reason we go through this time where. Uh, there's some temporary uh, restrictions on travel. Uh, so as, as we look forward, you know, we're going to have to uh, address, address that in, in how we serve our members and customers. And, and I don't think it has to be a bad thing. It's a new challenge. Uh, and it's going to be uh, some really points of innovation, I think, uh, uh, that we're seeing and, and certainly that we're working on in terms of uh, our products and services. So for example, one of the things that uh, um, that we quickly realized we needed to do uh, is to support the idea of displaying uh, in, in an event context, displaying multiple time zones. You know, pre-COVID, when somebody was at an event, they were all using the same time. Uh, now, now they might be participating across multiple time zones. So that, you know, it's, it's it may be seen little uh, things like that, but uh, you know a number of things that uh, uh, that happen, uh, if you will, um, that that we need to adjust to. Uh, and 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 I think um, just before I kind of um, wrap up here, the future, uh, you know, again, now that the shock has passed. The future is kind of interesting. So we get to create some new revenue models. Uh, and, it, and it might be um, maybe your organization, most of its revenue came through your annual conference. Well, well, that might work a little different. So there might be an opportunity to involve many, uh, you know, many more delegates in that experience who previously would never travel to it, uh, but now can participate remotely. Um, and so I think we're going to see emergence of new subscription models uh, and, and other ways of recovering that revenue. And, uh, and that, you know, I, I, I guess my, my thinking of that is that we need to look at this as an opportunity to rethink how we do some things uh, versus hoping the, the old way will return. Um, you know, this, this came out uh, actually in, in the poll that uh, Alan did, uh, communications, um, being able to deliver relevant content uh, to your members, uh, creating connections and engagement, uh, and of course, uh, recovering that, that lost revenue uh, are obviously huge things. And so this is, this is where we're focused with our customers and this is where uh, we see our customers focusing uh, in terms of what they're doing uh, to support their members at this time. Uh, James, I'm gonna send it back to you here. Excellent, thanks very much, Russ. So in a, in a moment, um, Michael's gonna um, quite show you some quite specific technology associated with some of our customers and what our customers are are doing um, to solve some of these challenges at, at the moment. Um, but to set some context to that, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit uh, about our products. What you can see at the moment is, is really a, a feature list of what we deliver as, as an organization uh, organization through our mobile applications. Um, this range of, of functionality is delivered through sort of three main areas of product that we have. Um, most of our customers or our customers will use this sort of range of functionality to deliver single events or multiple events. They might have a year round calendar delivered from their application, um, which has a lot of benefits associated with it in terms of your members, you know, understanding the, the application environment and, and revisiting it rather than having a different environment to go to for each event. Um, and, uh, and our other big area at the moment that's proving hugely popular, especially given the light of the scenario and the change that's occurring at the moment is our year round engagement application, where you can provide a multitude of different member benefits and thought leadership and what have you through to um, the application environment, as well as doing push notifications for communications, which is something that came up in the poll. It's just a huge um, and very dynamic um, way that our, our customers are using the, the applications. Um, 
so some of the differentiators around we do, what we do, like I mentioned earlier, around how we just support our customers and very customer centric. Um, the way we support and service our customers is, is, is just really powerful. A lot of organizations in our space will look for a sort of a 50% download um, rate of their applications amongst their membership audience being a good download rate. Um, at at um, Results Direct and RD Mobile, we frequently get 100% um, of members downloading the applications and that's because we provide loads of resource and support and thought leadership around how to do that. Um, it, and it's just part of our product really and, and, and what we do. Um, also, another big area of what we do is around simplicity. It's really just the ability to empower you. Um, you know, it's just so much technology out there that it feels like you need a degree in computer science to work out. Um, and our technology just really, even from your mobile de device as an administrator, being able to send out push notifications to targeted groups of individuals, being able to set up new lines of uh, uh, thought leadership or content within the application environment, you know, it's just super simple to do at, at the time of need. And that brings me on to how dynamic the application is um, generally and, and how, that, how that's really supported our customers through some of the changes they're having to make. Um, they're having to make at the moment and um, because it's not just you know people having to make changes around around COVID-19 and, and and what that has um or the implications that has on 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 um technology and our, how our customers are using it I mean that's really indicative of of a scenario that happens all the time you know maybe it's a new piece of thought leadership you want to get out there maybe you're at an event and the the uh the speaker is running late and you need to notify everyone and, and change the seminar schedule and all of those kind of things for you able to do that really quickly. One of our UK customers I spoke to who has a US office will really uh, gets quite frequently impacted by weather conditions in, the, in their US office. So, you know, the ability to virtualize their events and, and pivot on the dime as they, as they put it is just really important for them. And that sort of dynamic and simple ability to edit the application environment um, that we deliver is just hugely powerful for these um, for these organizations and what we've been able to do about around virtualizing events what we've been able to do about increasing the ability for organizations to engage with their members through push notifications and what have you is really indicative and the way we've developed our platform around those those requirements is really indicative of, 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 of our technology itself and how can you how you can apply it um, one of my favorite customers um, that we have in the UK is um, the, uh, uh, the International Society for Professional Innovation Managers. Um, I who doesn't love innovation? I love innovation. So um, I, I love these guys. They're a global organization. Um, and I had a great chat with um, Ian Bitron recently, who's, who's their, their leader, so to speak, over there. And, um, and because they're involved, they use our applications, but they're also involved in innovation. I was really intrigued to know what they're doing, you know, in, in light of the current circumstances and what they're planning further out and some of it was doom but some of it was just really positive as well one of the things that he was talking about was the the long-term economic impact that the current scenario has had because you know in my mind i was a bit like hey we're going to get over this and then it's back to normal but he has a global audience and and you know bringing all of those people together and and also he his concerns around you know the impact that it was having on their businesses and how available that made them to his member benefits and, and paying for his services it was just a really big deal and they've been doing some really clever things around membership rates and 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 what have you to um to to overcome those um sort of issues but also just the the sort of innovative things they're doing around their virtual events like for one thing when i did a, a webinar with him recently where he actually talked on it um what i noticed straight away was the background for is you can, I think Russ has a background up and you can select a, a, a background to go behind your Zoom meeting. So he had ISPIM up there with their virtual conference. And, you know, so he's promoting that all the time. And I really like that. They really embraced the whole idea of having a virtual event and engaging members through applications and, and, um, and what have you. Um, but, you know, some of, the, some of the other benefits he found is that so because people aren't having to necessarily travel to his events, he has his events all around the world, Berlin, Tokyo, um, um, Beijing. Um, and because people aren't necessarily traveling to those events, the amount of registrations they're getting is, is twice as much. They have a 100% increase in registrations because people don't have to worry about the travel expense. They don't have to worry about the accommodation expense and getting things signed off necessarily in that regard by, by managers. So his, his number of um, registrations has increased. The, the number of thought leaders in the industry 
who wants to present at his conference has gone up. So he used to have about nine or 10 people that wanted to do sort of keynote speeches at his conferences. Now he has 40 people. Um, and he can align those 40 people to like specific sessions rather than having to do it as keynote because again, people aren't having to travel, they're more available for it because there's more people, more registrants, more thought leaders and what have you. It also attracts more vendors and exhibitors um, and sponsors to be involved in it because, you know, the, it, it, this, so there's just a huge amount of unforeseen benefits associated with what, with what they've done. Um, and also, you know, using the engagement um, uh, application functionality, just their ability to communicate with members through push notifications. He said it's just been an absolute game changer for them, just in, in, in the sense that it dynamically changes the way they're communicating with their members. You know, their personal phones are generally personal to people, even if they're a work mobile phone, they're generally much more personal to people. So if you send them an email, chances are it'll get, you know, prioritized down as they've got a hundred things they've got to do for their everyday work and emails they've got to answer that they get paid on. And if you can get that through in a push notification, it buzzes in their pocket, it's a nice distraction, it, it just completely changes that sort of relationship and communication. So they've been heavily into, into doing those sort of push notifications and what have you. So yeah, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. People are doing some great innovative stuff and really making benefits as a, as a result of it. Um, which moves me on to our second poll, please, Alan. Um, and while Alan is setting that up, um, if, if you have questions, uh, please put them in the, in the Q&A section or in the chat, and, uh, and we're going to try and answer as many as we can before we, uh, before we end this morning. Great. Thanks, Russ and James. Okay, so this is a question um, around which methods of communication have you used over the past month? Um, and we're really interested in how uh, the, the not-for-profit sector is changing and how people are, are, are changing in the way that they communicate and engage uh, with uh, members and supporters. Uh, so the questions are, responses are coming through. I'm just going to allow uh, a few more uh, seconds for that, if you, uh, if you would. Great. Um, good. I'm, uh, I'm then going to um, end, uh, end the polling. So great, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll then publish the results. Okay, so interesting. Uh, what we are seeing is pretty much in line with what we would have expected. The, the main channels are still the website, uh, although research shows that, and, and I, I guess from our own personal experience, we're not individually spending a lot of time uh, running around on each other's websites. Um, Campaign email is still a is still a big channel. Again, our research shows, unfortunately, campaign email um, in the same way that we most of us defend ourselves. Uh, we're we're sending it, but it's filtered out, um, and it's really very hard to get the message across uh, through that channel. Social media has has, has a big place, of course, but it's it, it's very often one way and social listening back into uh, your overall knowledge of a person is extremely difficult to, uh, to achieve. Um, a growth in webinars, uh, we're, we're seeing that a lot, um, not just a COVID thing. Uh, we, we're seeing that the, the sector is moving um, much more to webinars. We certainly have um, over the last year or two. Um, and we found that actually what, we, what we've achieved there is much bigger delegate numbers because who the hell wants to travel two hours to go to, a, to an event? Um, zero through mobile apps. Uh, which is really interesting, but I guess that's why people are attending uh, attending the event today. Um, we're seeing mobile apps increasing in the UK, at least in terms of aspiration, uh, but not not as much in execution, which is really interesting, uh, according to the survey poll. And and the person um, who put uh, other, uh, two people who put other, I'd be grateful if you wouldn't mind posting what you mean by other um, in the in the Q and A or chat. Uh, that would be really helpful to understand. Great, I'm gonna uh, stop sharing results and pass over back to the RD team, thank you. Great, thanks very much. That's, uh, that's really appreciated. Um, okay, now uh, with further ado, I'm gonna hand over to uh, Michael Jones, who's gonna tell us a bit more about our customer base and, and our technology. Michael, we've gone on far too long already, so sorry for eating into your time. Um, over to you. No, I, I appreciate that and uh... It's great to be chatting with everybody this morning, um, and I'll uh, I'll share my screen here in just a second. 
But uh, what I would say is, you know, the polls, uh, I love the, the poll responses, especially in the first one, because it really does highlight a lot of the same challenges um, that we have seen amongst our customer base, you know, in terms of, of what's been impacted, you know, by the current global situation and, and really how these organizations are responding. And I've actually been pretty inspired by the creativity and uh, James, you know, highlighted the word innovation, but I do see a lot of innovation that's happening, you know, both at the organizational levels, but also seeing a lot of innovation at the technology level. And so I'd like to take a couple of minutes here and just highlight a couple of specific examples of uh, organizations and sort of what they've been doing to address this and, uh, and actually shows some, uh, some of the uh, uh, actual uh, phone interfaces and kind of walk through some live examples. Uh, the first one I'd like to start with is uh, the British and International Golf Greenkeepers Association. And uh, this organization, you know, they uh, really took and looked at mobile and said, you know, is this the right medium for communicating with our membership? And, uh, and it really was, um, you know, for them, 75% of uh, their members, you know, access content from their website on their mobile device. And they said, you know, this could be a really powerful communication tool for us. This could be a very powerful member value uh, and be able to really have a way of serving them at a higher level. And so they went ahead and launched the Biga app and uh, had a number of very early successes with it. Um, basically, uh, of the folks that have adopted it, 46% of them are now using it on an everyday basis. And so uh, a lot of engagement and uh, a couple of very innovative things. I know one of the questions came through in the chat was about integration. They did integrate it with their CRM. Um, they happened to use Pixelate for that. And, uh, and so what that allowed for was member and non-member content to be able to come through. They were able to uh, directly pull content like news, um, their member directory, you know, things of that nature. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we had, uh, you know, the whole COVID uh, situation that hit. And, um, you know, and with that, uh, I'm going to show here real quick a couple examples. But that became a very um, key point for them because now what they could do with this tool is they could now start to deliver content to the members um, on a very real-time basis. And, and as James said, you know, the ability to send push notifications uh, directly to the devices to let people know in real time what's going on. And, you know, and it really highlights some of the trends that we see from a mobile adoption perspective. And these are, are not just in the United States or in the UK. I mean, these really, these trends are on a global level. But, you know, one of the things when, uh, you know, a couple months ago, if, uh, you know, our customers came to me and said, you know, how often should we be sending push notifications? Uh, you know, I would say, you know, maybe once, once a week would be about right. Maybe three, four, five times a month. Keep it top of mind, but don't overwhelm your members. They have a lot going on. Well, now with this, uh, with the recent events, um, you could send a push notification almost every single day if you wanted to uh, at this point, because people are hungry to understand how is this impacting their jobs? How is this going to impact their industry? How is it going to impact their finances? And so, um, so that's what they're able to do. Um, like many organizations, they put resources together. And so one aspect of the product is that it allows for content to be brought in from multiple sources. So that can be through integration. It can display documents. It can display web pages. And so they were able to keep that content updated both on their website and in the app automatically. You know, in addition to that, as I mentioned, they had sections that were for member only, and it did feature a single sign-on solution for that. Um, so they could, again, show information, but non-members would not be able to even see that that information was available. They did bring in news content um, automatically, as I had mentioned earlier, um, you know, the ability to send notifications. And then also um, they, uh, their job listings was another really key part right before all of this hit. It was actually one of their most visited uh, sections of their website and so they brought that into the mobile app because they knew when people were looking to make a career change they wanted to be able to check that on the go from wherever they were and their product and sales directory and so again just in the midst of everything that's happening this has been a very critical tool for them to be able to address that communication challenge um, and to be able to keep their members informed of what was going on 
Um, the second uh, organization that I'd like to highlight is the American Association of Airport Executives. And this organization, as you can imagine, the airline industry massively impacted um, by uh, what's been going on with, uh, with the pandemic. And so uh, for them, they had launched their Engagefully app uh, about 18 months ago. And it was designed from the beginning to be not only their year-round member communication tool, but it was also designed to be their primary tool for their events. Um, and they were running a lot of live events, 70 uh, plus events every single year. And so because the product comes with an unlimited event license, it means that you can use it for as many events as you want. It does not change the price. And so they were getting their money's worth out of it for sure. And so, um, you know, great adoption. Um, over 60% of their members downloaded the app before COVID-19 happened. But once that happened, now, this, uh, now their app became the primary mechanism for getting information out to the membership. So again, we're able to react very, very quickly and put together planning resources. Um, one of the things that they can do is because it's very simple, to be able to create content in the platform. The platform is actually um, a content management system for a native app. So that means that you can create pages, um, basically about the same as you would create an email or a Word document, publish them, and then it's stored natively on the phone. And so they were able to bring together a lot of content. Uh, this would be an example of that. Um, you know, bringing content together on this uh, particular situation. They literally created this whole section. They had some of it that was uh, member only content. And then you can see there behind the firewall. And then you can also see that they have uh, content that was for the general public as well. Um, Cause obviously the public being greatly impacted. Notifications, they wanted to send out information and be able to keep people informed of what was happening. And then of course their event section. They also found that one of the key areas uh, that was uh, important to their membership was hearing from each other. So they also brought their member directory into the app as well as their community so that all of um, their members could be able to communicate with each other and learn from each other in terms of how people were reacting and what they were doing. So that's another example. The last one that I wanna touch on is, uh, is the Virginia Society of CPAs. And this is actually an interesting story because um, they launched the app uh, and were using it for their events. Um, and for them, it was really, uh, they looked at uh, a cost analysis. They, they wanted to reduce printing costs for their events. They didn't want to do printed program guides. They wanted to be able to find a way to save money, generate additional revenue, um, and, and really look for ways to optimize staff time. And so the app was a great solution. They had a lot of success with it. Um, but one of the very interesting things about the Virginia Society of CPAs is that they were simulcasting their events uh, for a while now. And so that means they had live attendees and they had virtual attendees. And so they used the platform uh, for both. And, uh, and it was interesting because we actually did a webinar with them uh, last month, right before kind of everything shut down. And, uh, and they were talking about how prepared they were that if things had to go virtual, that uh, you know, in terms of the new normal of supporting virtual attendees on an ongoing basis, that, that they already were established, They're, they were already set up for it, and uh, and it was just it was really interesting, of course, um, to see how that then unfolded over the next uh, week after that. But um, to give you just a quick uh, example for them, um, what I wanted to do was we actually took a number of the best practices from different organizations that were doing virtual events or that were um, doing uh, blended events. And we really put them together in one spot. I just wanted to walk through a few examples of what we're seeing um, as far as best practices. So again, if your events have been impacted, if you're looking at, uh, we may have to take an event virtual or we need to support a mixed audience, how are we gonna handle it? These are some of the best practices that we've seen evolve so far. So I'm gonna start first with this idea of preparing the attendees who are going to be there um, for a virtual experience because it's in many ways very different from attending a live event. And so one of the things we've seen is that organizations are using this for 
uh, putting together, you know, pre-event tips, you know, how to, uh, how to uh, set up your home situation to experience it, um, you know, what to expect from a virtual conference, or even how to set up the technology, you know, if it's Zoom or uh, whatever platform you're using for streaming. Um, the ability to send notifications becomes even more important and to be able to send targeted notifications so that you can send notifications just to your speakers through the phone. You can send notifications just to your sponsors or exhibitors or just to your virtual attendees, um, it, reminding them of things that maybe the on-site attendees don't need to know about. The second area, of course, here is we're seeing as far as how people are delivering content. And from that perspective, there's a couple of different scenarios. You know, one is delivering live content. And live content, um, you know, very similar to the way that you might uh, have for on-site. Uh, we have the ability, the delegate can go in and create their schedule. They can filter, they can sort, find, find out which sessions they want to attend if there's breakouts. And then right from within the app itself, they can then launch that live session. Um, and it works across the platforms. In this case, we have it hooked up to Zoom. So this would actually launch the Zoom app right on the phone. And now they can watch, they can listen, they can actually toggle back and forth between the apps. Now they can do things where they can be listening and they can come in and fill out um, you know, polls, they can fill out evaluations, they could ask questions or upvote questions. And this in particular was one of the key features of the Virginia Society of CPAs uh, found very, very useful is that they would have virtual uh, attendees asking questions and then people in the room actually upvoting those same questions. And so, um, again, it brought people together. And this kind of highlights one of two different models that we're seeing emerge out of this. You know, one is that there's delegates where they're having a full mobile experience. So they're actually literally doing the entire event on a mobile device. And, you know, and this actually, it's, it's interesting to look at some of the data around this, but um, since the, you know, since the um, pandemic started, of course, home internet usage has gone up tremendously. So many people uh, teleworking, sheltering in place. But what was fascinating is if you look at the desktop uh, usage, it went up 15%. If you look at mobile phone usage, specifically around data, it went up 53%. So you've got people spending significantly more time on their phone than they were before while they're at their homes. And, um, and so again, and we see that, that trend you know, continuing. And so this idea that they're experiencing everything on the phone, the other experience is what we would call a mobile companion experience. And that's where they're gonna have a desktop computer and they're going to be you know, maybe watching sessions there, but their phone is how they're gonna be engaging. And so for that, our products, our uh, customers have been leveraging the desktop version of the product, which allows for, you know, same features as the mobile phone to be able to have delegates go in, they can log in, they can create their schedule, it'll sync across their devices, and they can come from right within here, they can go ahead and launch the sessions, again, launch it on whatever platform that they're using, and now they can watch it on the screen while they're engaging on their phone, uh, asking questions, or engaging with other delegates. I mean, there's a number of other things you could do here, like taking notes or posting to the um, discussion board and things like that. The second type of content we're seeing is pre-recorded content. And this is really either for sanity, where you're pre-recording it and then posting it live at a certain time, or we've also seen where organizations uh, have a live session, but then immediately post the recording back for people in different geographic regions who may not have been able to attend at that time. And so in both case, you know, the app basically will work across multiple platforms. So you can uh, have content that's posted to Dropbox or YouTube or Vimeo or uh, Zoom recordings. It can be audio only. You can show slide decks and all of these different types of media can be brought together then in one place. The other area that we, we'd like to, to focus on because we're seeing it's come up a lot now is how do we get people to engage with each other? And also, how are we um, basically connecting partners and sponsors who in many cases are driving revenue uh, for the organization? How do we add value to them? And so one of the things we're seeing is this idea of um, roundtable discussions or topical discussions um, and being able to add those to the schedule as well. 
So in this case, um, and we've actually hosted uh, some of these ourselves, um, but the idea that uh, you can have a room, you can have a moderator, and now uh, delegates can go in, and now they can, very similar to a, you know, like a Zoom meeting, not a webinar, where everyone has their camera on, and they're, they're able to speak with each other, they're able to ask questions and dialogue. You know, these are some of the different areas that bring people together, not only for peer learning, but for networking. And, um, and so we actually, one of the things that we uh, do with the app is because you can create your own uh, content modules, you can actually build out things like topics and topical discussions and things like that right from within the platform. So that's another area that we're seeing. Um, the last one I'm just gonna touch on from that is the idea of virtual trade shows and the idea of how to get exposure for um, your exhibitors and sponsors. Um, again, the key thing for organizations that are supporting these events is they wanna be able to tell their story. And so with that, you know, in a live event, you know, that happens a lot where you're walking around and you're shaking hands, if we ever get to do that again. And uh, in this case, what we're looking to do is try to create that in a virtual environment. And so this idea of a virtual trade show where, for instance, you know, just like a normal trade show, there's a block of time and uh, delegates can go in, they can decide, okay, which of these organizations, you know, do we want to, to go in and, and visit? And then what they can do is they can actually go into a, a Zoom room, um, be able to, uh, you know, in this case, it would be James and, oh, you can't see this. There you go. There you'd have James and Mark, uh, and they can actually be, uh, um, you know, hosting that. And, uh, and what would happen is now they can ask questions, uh, they can do mini demos. These are different opportunities to engage directly and tell their story. The other thing that we're seeing is sponsored content. And so the idea of being able to allow for partners to be able to um, sponsor some of the sessions, maybe even be able to share for three minutes at the beginning, tell their story that way. So that's another example of that. And then um, networking, of course, also becomes a really important component. So between having a discussion wall and we're seeing some best practices around this in terms of how people are engaging, whether it's, uh, asking questions like, you know, post a photo of what you see out your window uh, to things more serious, you know, around how are you handling, how's your organization handling uh, teleworking or things like that. Um, you've also got a directory where they can look up their fellow delegates. Um, you've got a quick chat feature where they can speak with each other. And so those becoming more important in a virtual environment where you're trying still to build that community. And then being able to provide resources, codes of conduct, things of that nature. So those are some of the different things that we're seeing just as far as the app and some of the different features uh, that have been even more heavily used since we've, uh, since we've had this situation. So, so with that, um, James, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you and Russ. Lovely. Thank you very much, Michael. That's great stuff. And um, <clears throat> thanks everyone as well for posting all of the questions into our Q&A. Um, it's really appreciated and into the chat, there's some good stuff in there. Um, Joyce um, from Heart Square is gonna take us through those questions. Um, Joyce is one of the people that's working in the background behind all the webinar technology, so there's a bunch of them in there. Thanks very much to all those people. But Joyce, I, I understand you've got some questions for us. Yes, there has um, been a few coming through and I know obviously we won't have time to run through them all. So I, I know you guys will follow up. But um, the first one was um, saying I'm interested in mobile apps that we can use to help unemployed young people and adults um, improve employability skills, job search and apply for jobs. Are you aware of any such apps? Um, and then, um, are, which will be easier? Would you like me to go through all of the questions at once and then you can see which ones you can answer now or what, what is easiest for you? Now, I, well, yeah, um, Michael, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Uh, I was, let's, let's do them one at a time. Yeah. And, and, you know, as far as that specific one, um, you know, that is something that you could do through the Engage Fully platform um, because again, it is very similar to a content management system for a, uh, for a native app that if that is the needed information, if that's the tool that's needed, um, you know, one of the things I love about mobile is, uh, you know, we use apps to basically, you know, take this little piece of hardware and turn it into the tool that we need at any given time 
Uh, today I needed it for an alarm clock. Uh, I had two mobile phones set to wake me up this morning. And so the idea that we can turn it into a tool. And so uh, I love creative ideas where, you know, it's okay, here's the, here's the problem or here's, here's, here's a, a, uh, a social issue or something that needs to be addressed. And then, okay, can we use the phone to address that? And, uh, and yeah, I mean, we've seen some very innovative ways that different organizations have used the product to meet specific needs. So, um, so I would say that's something that you might even want to talk further with James about. Perfect. Thank you. Um, then the next question was, our website already has news and events calendar. Um, and of course, we wouldn't want to create two sets of information. So could we use our CMS, um, which is Sitefinity, to push the news and events information to your app as well as our website? I'll take that one, too. Um, absolutely. That's exactly what Biga did. Um, they happen to use Pixelate for their, um, for their CRM. And so, um, so yeah, we do integrations. In fact, we encourage integrations for all of our customers because it does um, really make it more efficient for staff, improves accuracy, and it just um, adds a lot of value to be able to have that data uh, automated. We're, we're big on uh, enter once and, and display everywhere, wherever possible. So, and we have specific examples of that. Perfect. And, and Michael, if I can just uh, add on there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the questions that, uh, popped up in a couple of different ways in the chat, uh, you know, was uh, how much does this cost? Um, is this bespoke or, or custom? Uh, and so I just, I want to highlight that um, uh, what, what we really are offering here are two different products. One is called Event Central, one is called Engagefully. Event Central uh, is about driving events, uh, both in person and uh, as well as driving events virtually uh, or online. And uh, Engagefully takes all of that functionality uh, and augments it with a number of year-round features, uh, particularly around communications uh, and content sharing, uh, as well as some social features to, uh, to help people uh, reconnect uh, with each other, especially uh, in these times. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, because that came up as well, um, typically from an annual subscription, uh, we're looking at 2,000 to 8,000 uh, pounds. There's some variances for that, but uh, I just kind of wanted to get that out there since that had popped up uh, in a couple of different places. Great, thank you. Um, and then just another question was, um, how do you overcome the issues, um, problems with updates um, and Apple versus Android systems and the, the cost um, the cost and time to develop both for both? Is it worth it? Well, I, I, again, um, what, what I was just talking about with the two platforms is um, uh, they, are, they are standardized products uh, and the annual subscription includes all of the updates uh, for both platforms over the course of the year. We typically have three or four uh, major updates, uh, you know, with new features or significant enhancements to existing features. Uh, and then, um, uh, and, and then of course, there's, you know, minor maintenance and, and all of that uh, is included. So you're not really, you're not really paying all of the fees that go into developing a a one-off app, uh, nor burdened with, you know, the maintenance costs that tend to add up uh, from doing a, a custom app approach. Uh, ours is a very standardized platform. It's very configurable to uh, the specific customer's needs. Uh, you can use a hosted version uh, or you can have a, a dedicated app in the stores. The hosted version uh, provides uh, a number of branding options as well for your organization. Great, thank you. Um, a few more questions coming in, some of which are related, um, really uh, around how long does it take to set up the app, which, which links in with um, yeah, sort of what is needed and how do we get started, if you want to cover that one. Uh, sure, since I was talking about the, the product con uh, configuration, uh, if you came to us uh, after the webinar and said, I would like to get started with this and I'd like to use it to start communicating with our members, uh, we could have you up and running this afternoon uh, from a hosted version. Uh, if you want to have a dedicated app in the stores, uh, that typically takes uh, a few more weeks. 
Perfect. And then um, you might have covered part of this already. Um, I'd be interested to know how subscription modelling changes for virtual events. How do we adjust the cost for physical to virtual exposure and justify value for money? Um, that, I mean, that's a really interesting question, too. So I, I think, you know, what, what you're really, maybe what I'm really hearing in there is how, how can I achieve revenue with uh, uh, if I'm running a virtual event? So from from the product cost, it, it's all included in the fee. Uh, but, but of course, when you're looking at uh, moving from an in-person event to a virtual event, uh, a big question is, you know, how can I uh, attract sponsorship money? How can I, um, you know, how can I recover the revenue that I'm not getting uh, typically through uh, the same ticket sale price and the same sponsorship? So, uh, we offer a number of features for that. And Michael, do you want to, uh, I know you touched on some of them. Why don't you just highlight? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if anything, I think as we're looking at now the new normal coming out of, you know, once we're all no longer sheltering in place, um, you know, it's even going to be more critical to have the solid technology platform because you're going to have both your live delegates and you're going to have virtual delegates that are, are going to need to be supported. And so from that perspective, um, you know, the technology is actually probably one of the most affordable solutions because of the fact that it has the unlimited event license. You can run as many events as you want through it. Um, it's not a highly priced item, especially given the amount of technology that's been developed for it over the last eight to 10 years. Um, and then from a revenue generation perspective, I mean, we have many, many examples where through monetization, whether it's through sponsorships, ad spaces, sponsored content, that, um, that organizations have actually generated significantly more revenue from the app than the cost of the license. And as far as going to a virtual model where so many of the other costs are reduced, as far as like on-site you know, convention centers and hotels and all these other things, um, it's actually poised to be even more profitable uh, using the technology as far as the as the revenue opportunities with sponsorship, with advertising, things like that. Um, because again, the organizations that are sponsoring events, they still need to get in front of your members. They still need to be, you know, getting their story out. And so a virtual platform for that in many ways has a broader reach at a lower cost than, you know, than the more traditional uh, live event models. So, so we're actually seeing that, that from a from an ROI perspective, uh, that it's actually, you know, on the same or even better in some cases. Great questions. Absolutely fantastic questions. Perfect. So I think we're, we're kind of running up on our time here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we really appreciate everybody uh, joining us this morning. And uh, we'll be following up, uh, certainly through email, um, and uh, you know, answering uh, some other points that have come up in the chat along the way, uh, as well as offering uh, to talk about how your organization, um, you know, might benefit from these more specifically. Um, it's pretty exciting because we literally can have you up and running this afternoon uh, and build on things from there. Um, so with that said, Alan, any Yeah, any great. Thank points? you very much. I just want to uh, thank all the delegates for attending um, and uh, thank the RD mobile team uh, for, a, for a great uh, presentation and insight into how to get started on, on mobile uh, apps for, for your nonprofit. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. We'll follow up with the slide deck and we'll follow up individually with questions, with uh, answers to questions where people have uh, requested it. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for your time. Thank you.